some of the homework I assigned dealt with continuous charge distributions. So I wanted to spend a little time and talk to you about them. When we say continuous charge distribution, we mean that the charge is going to be distributed uniformly about something, in this case, rod. So whenever you see a uniform charge density, start thinking continuous charge distribution, which means we get to use, guess what? Calculus! And that would have been a great time for reverb. But let's go ahead and solve a problem. Just pretend that we had X. So you have a point P right over here. You want to find the charge from this rod. So you don't know what the total charge is. Normally, when we want electric field, you know that the electric field equals KQ over R squared, where that's the distance. And in this case, we're just dealing with the magnitudes. But you don't know that. So what we have to do is we have to break this down, and we get this little piece, a distance x away, and we're going to call this dq, some little piece of the charge density. So what you know is that we can take a little piece of this electric field, dE, little chunk of this electric field, is caused by k dq over x squared, x being the distance from this little point to where we care about. And since we're interested in the total field, we have to integrate. So let's talk about what integration bounds we want to use. Well, in the problem, this was 0.2 meters. This was 0.1. So we want to integrate from 0.2 meters, 0.2 meters to 0.3 meters. So you cover this whole distance. And the second thing we need to look at is this dq. Now, you know that it's a little bit of distance right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to replace dq with your uniform charge density. So this is coulombs per meter. If you want coulombs, you have to multiply this by meters so that they'll cancel out and you're just left with coulombs. And the way you get a little chunk of that is you get a little piece dx. So that you have a little piece of charge is equal to the charge density of a little chunk. So let's plug in some numbers. Well, first let's do some variables, because you should always do variables first. So we're going to start with this equation. We're going to integrate in the integral of x squared. From calculus, you're going to get your total electric field equals negative k and lambda times 1 over x. And I pulled out the negative earlier, so we don't need it there. 1 over x evaluated at 0.2 meters and 0.3 meters. Plugging this in, we'll get electric field equal to k lambda negative 1 over 0.3, that's 0.3, minus 1 over 0.2 plugging in our value of k as 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meters squared per coulomb, and this is 3 times to the minus 6 newtons, or sorry, coulombs, it's charge density coulombs per meter, you will find out that you get an answer of 45 times 10 to the 4th Newtons per coulomb, 4.5, 4.5 Newtons per coulomb. And this is in the plus x hat direction. You can tell because this was point P. The charge on this rod is positive, so your electric field will point this way. All right, so the keys to this, replace your charge with charge density times some length, figure out what's changing, and then integrate. So let's look at a slightly different case. Now in this case, we've got a ring of uniform charge density, a distance p. Now one of the things you should always look for is symmetry 
So if you know that if you have this little piece over here going this way, and then you have another piece here this way, you can see that the Y components cancel. So the only thing we care about is the X component. So we're going to say that EX, which is the field at P, which is the only thing we care about, equals E times your cosine of theta, where this angle right here is theta, which happens to be this angle. So let's look at a couple other symmetry things, or symmetric, the can't talk. We're going to look at a couple more symmetries that we can exploit. So what we're going to do, again, start with the same thing, E equals the integral, and we have to use the integral because it's a continuous charge distribution, K dq over r squared. And you'll notice that I put r squared here. That's because r is the distance from dq to this. And this is r, which equals the square root of 0.2 squared plus 0.1 squared. All right, And this is constant. Any point on this ring is going to have that. So we can just treat it like that. Now, right here, this dq, again, we're going to replace this with lambda D, I'm going to call it L this time, and it is going to be the circumference of this, because that's where your charge is. So if we look at this, it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go towards 2 pi r. So we now have E equals integral 0, 2 pi r, and big R I'm using for this radius. That's big R. 2 pi r, k lambda over r squared dl, sorry, dl, which equals 2 pi r k lambda over r squared. And if you plug this in, you get 3.04 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb. And then if you look at your symmetry, your electric field has to point this way because this is a plus charge distribution and electric field points the way a positive charge go, would go. Points to force on plus charge. All right, so it points to the direction on the plus charge. Couple notes on the units. This seems really big, and it is, but you have to remember that one coulomb is gigantic. All right. So one electron in this electric field, it'll accelerate. It'll do a good job. But in order to feel, what is this, 300,000 newtons of force, you have to have one coulomb of charge, which is really hard to do. I hope that helps clear some things up with continuous charge distributions, and I'll see you in class.